Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Freshman Spotlight, where we go back to the 2024 prospects and, you know, kind of project some freshmen that we think are going to play year one at the collegiate level. And we have to start with, you know, a wide receiver that we haven't talked much about throughout spring practice and kind of summer because he wasn't enrolled for spring practice, but a wide receiver that I love coming out of high school when he committed to Florida State. And now that you're reading what he's doing to start fall camp and what he did during summer workouts, I'm kind of convinced that Elijah Moore is going to play a role in this Florida State offense. And when you start looking at what it takes for a freshman to play year one at the power four level, you got to look at two things. One, the physicality. Are these kids developed and ready to play at the college football level. But I think number two, how does the depth chart shake out? Are they going to have an opportunity to play for Florida State? And I look at Elijah Moore and say, we are excited about the wide receiver room, but make no mistake about it. There is not a solidified wide receiver rotation heading into 2024. And I think Elijah Moore has the opportunity to kind of crack that rotation because he kind of brings a special set of skill set that Florida State's going to want to utilize in the 2024 season, fired up to get into Elijah Moore, take a look at this Florida State depth chart and you know, kind of talk about what role he can play year one for Florida State, fired up to get into it before we do. And as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. And these are always a blast for me to do every single year where you know, we talk about these kids extensively 12 months ago, and now we get the opportunity to kind of circle back and kind of project our favorite freshman. We got a lot of Florida State wants to cover over the next couple of weeks. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into Elijah Moore. Now, I want to go back to the senior film and just take a little bit of a look at the skill set that Elijah Moore has, but I think you have to start with the physicality that he has. He's almost 6'5", 200-plus pounds. This is a wide receiver that, from a physical standpoint, I mean, going back to even his junior year film, he looked like a collegiate wide receiver. I mean, obviously the big frame, but he had he's kind of put together. And so from a physicality standpoint, you feel kind of good that he can get on a college football field and match up physically, which is a little bit of a different conversation with some other wide receivers who might be on the smaller size, might not be able to deal with some of the press coverage that they're going to see at the collegiate level. Elijah Moore, you don't really have – many of those worries. And then I think secondly, Elijah Moore brings a unique set of set of skill sets that I think Florida State will be able to use in the 2024 season. And I think it starts with what he can do working vertically down the field. You dive back into the senior year film. This is a wide receiver that excels attacking the deeper third and he excels at the catch point and you look at Florida State and what this offense might look like with DJU running the show I am convinced that Florida State is going to want to use DJ's arm and attack down the field when you have a wide receiver like Elijah Moore even as a true freshman is going to be you know a little bit of a matchup nightmare because of how big he is I think he's going to have the opportunity to get on the field and you start diving into a little bit of the film for Elijah Moore. One, if you want to kind of roll your safeties into the box and leave Elijah Moore on the boundary one-on-one -on -one with cornerbacks, I just don't think there's many cornerbacks that can deal with the frame and size that Elijah Moore has. And I think more importantly, he knows how to use his size. I mean, you take a look at this rep, kind of just working a little back shoulder concept where I mean, really, really crafty in terms of how he's using his hands. He has tremendous body control and coordination, and he's just going to go up and high point this football. I mean, Elijah Moore knows how to use that big frame, even as a young freshman. You continue to work through the film. It shows a little bit of, I mean, now we're going to be attacking the deeper third. It shows some kind of smoothness in the route, hey, like a little stop and go. And we're going to attack the deeper third. And I think another thing for Elijah Moore, this dude's an animal to bring down. I mean, you look at 6'4", 200 plus pounds. I mean, there are going to be a lot of defensive backs that you know struggle to deal with Elijah Moore and bringing him to the ground. I think another thing, as you kind of continue to dive through the film with Elijah Moore that at least stands out for me is what he can do outside of the numbers towards the boundary. And again, that is somewhere where DJU allows Florida State to access. And this is not a shot at Jordan Travis, but the arm strength with Jordan Travis, you didn't see Florida State ask him to throw opposite hash to the boundary very often because that wasn't necessarily where Jordan Travis excelled. 
You look at DJU, that's where he excels, pushing the ball to the boundary. You look at Elijah Moore, I think he can be one of those premier boundary wide receivers that you know works outside of the numbers. One, I kind of a smooth route runner for 6'5", 200 pounds. I mean, normally you see these kind of wide receivers just kind of be linear athletes in terms of I can only just work vertically. And you see Elijah Moore, I mean, pretty clean in and out of his breaks, creating separation, putting that cornerback in a blender. DJU has the ability to make these kind of throws. And again, I think what's so exciting is the movement skills for that size, really, really clean change in direction, getting in and out of his breaks, leaving that cornerback in the dust and obviously what he can do after the catch. And then you continue to work through Elijah Moore in the senior year film and say, this kid can also operate in the red zone. I mean, the catch radius that Elijah Moore has, it's massive. I mean, you look at guys like Johnny Wilson or Keon Coleman and how big a targets they were when the throwing windows get small in the red zone. I mean, Elijah Moore can be one of those wide receivers too, where you look at a one, we're going to create a little bit of separation. And I love how he moves for six, five, and then just a big target. I mean, there's not a lot of throwing windows open in the red zone. Just throw it up for big Elijah Moore. He's going to make it happen. I mean, he is a very, very big catch radius in the red zone. And then you start looking at the wide receiver rotation. And we've been very vocal that although there's not a necessarily proven commodity in this Florida State wide receiver room, there is a ton of talent. And I think we we all have the feeling that Malik Benson is probably going to be the wide receiver one. You probably have the feeling that Ja'Kai Douglas, especially with Destin Hill going down, is probably going to be operating in the slot. I think the competition for the wide receiver three, four, and five, specifically the wide receivers that are going to be the big bodies that are working on the boundary, that's kind of what's up for grab. And you have some guys that we're excited about, right? Hakeem Williams going into year two, we kind of think he's going to have that breakout year. I think the difference between Hakeem Williams and Elijah Moore, Elijah Moore was much more of a polished wide receiver. You know, we knew Hakeem Williams was kind of having to get broken down and built back up. There was a lot of work to do with Hakeem Williams. You love the raw physical talent, but we kind of knew he wasn't going to be a year one guy. You look at Kentron, certainly could be a guy. Dorian Williams, and I think Elijah Moore – with his special set of skills, can be a guy that kind of cracks that rotation. I think you're in a good spot if you're Florida State where you have Kentron, you have Darian Williams, and guys that you kind of know what they bring to the table. They've played a lot within this Florida State offense. And then you have two guys, Nakeem Williams and Elijah Moore, that I think have some crazy, crazy upside. If Elijah Moore or Nakeem Williams – start winning some of those position battles. That's probably the best case scenario. But if you're Florida State, say Elijah Moore needs another year, you have guys like Kentron and Darian Williamson who you kind of can rely on. So I look at this Florida State wide receiver and say, you got some nice veteran talent that you kind of know what they're going to be, but you have some unknowns in Hakeem Williams and Elijah Moore that I think represent some really big time upside in this wide receiver room. And again, Elijah Moore, He wasn't in for spring ball, so we don't know a ton about what he looks like on the college football field, but what you read from summer workouts, what you read from the early reports in fall practice, this kid might be able to play for Florida State early. One of those freshmen that I am certainly keeping an eye on. I think we're going to look into Cam Davis next for Florida State. We'll cut it there. Appreciate you guys rocking with it again. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.